Okay, in this video, we want to compare client-side web processing to server-side web processing. And, you know, this is up to the developer, the programmer, when they're creating their website and their solutions, whether they want to offload some of the processing to the client side, to the client's browser, with additional uh, scripting languages and programs, or whether they want to do more of it on the server side. Okay, so obviously the browser is going to do, in the URI, will have the request header, and it will request something, some page, some resource from the server, and then the server will retrieve that information typically locally on its server, maybe with a, with a back end, but then it'll deliver that page to the clients, this is our laptop, for example, over the internet. But let's talk about first client-side processing and what's going to what's going to happen in that particular solution which again it's debatable whether this is something that's better or worse okay we don't want to get into that debate obviously there's some, there's more security issues with client side processing for sure but you know if you use client side processing if the developer decides to offload that to the browser and plugins you know it's going to be more interactive for the user uh, it's going to have more you know dynamic pages they can take advantage of local storage on that machine and uh, take advantage of memory, RAM memory on that machine and caching on that machine. Obviously, cookies uh, are going to run on the client side. Uh, the client has more power to initiate certain requests for certain activities. Uh, ac remote services can be initiated from the browser on the client side. And some of the common languages, probably the most common would be, you know, JavaScript, but HTML, uh, cascading style sheets, and just, you know, various scripting languages. So that is client side processing. Again, this is in the context of web processing over the internet. Let's talk now about server side processing. With server side web processing, this browser running on this particular laptop it now becomes more of a thin client, okay? So during this part of retrieving and delivery, the server is not sending any processing code or using any processing code from the web client, from the web browser. That also means that that's less opportunity, it's less information that a cracker or a man in the middle learns about the server side and it's less vulnerability for the server as well. So less opportunity to attack the server because less information, less processing going on on the client side over the big bad internet. Now, from the server's point of view, you know, they're gonna have, you know, server side processing going on, but it also opens up kind of a world of possibilities of what can happen uh, as tra traffic is sent to these backend database servers, which could be SQL, it could be MySQL, it could be NoSQL, it could be Oracle, uh, a wide variety of backend database services where big data can be performed, uh, big query can be performed, machine learning, uh, maybe some uh, using some neural networking, maybe with uh, uh, artificial intelligence, doing some analytics. So there, there's so much more potential with server side processing because a lot of these things are simply not going to be done on the, the client side processing. Some of the most common languages that we would use, and there's a lot, but you know, PHP and Python on the server side, uh, ASP.NET and C Sharp uh, for statistics and analytics. We're starting to see a lot more data science being done with the R language. So uh, as we can see, uh, two differences uh, between client-side web processing and server-side web processing.